grab it here. Yep, I'm leaving um, Eagle for now. And um, I actually bumped into one of the limitations, which is it has a PCB area uh, support limitation, so you can't make PCBs over a certain area. And also, I'm a bit questioning whether it actually has a future as a standalone product now that it's under out of desk. I mean, I see an increased tendency to integrate the, um, the functionality with Fusion 360 directly and um, also to introduce Autodesk preferred um, manufacturing partners. So um, I think that will you know, probably limit its future flexibility. So, yeah, so I decided to move on. So, anyway, why would you need PCP design software? I mean, you don't really need it if you're going to do um, small-scale one-off prototypes that have a limited number of design criteria and are not that complex. And I mean, you can use like a breadboard, that's more reasonable in, in those cases. I mean, the need to use PCB design software is primarily driven by your um, design criteria for what you're trying to build. So, so the first thing is like required components. In this case, is like you know, what type of active components you have, what type of passive components you have, you know, kind of other elements you have in your um, in your um, design. Uh, it's actually interesting that the required number of pins is a critical factor because uh, um, some pieces of software actually limit the number of pins you can use depending on what, how much you pay. Uh, then of course the required board area and shape, um, not something that one should ignore. Sometimes you might have a, have a requirement for odd, an odd shaped TCB. Um, then there's an issue of um, what type of signaling are you going to have on the board? Like, are you passing radio frequency um, signals on the board? Are you doing um, high-speed digital signaling on the board? Do you have high voltages or currents that you need to deal with? And of course, then it becomes an issue in this type of environment to handle those. And then. Um, other mechanical constraints and requirements that, that um, need to be met. And um, also one thing that one might run into is uh, electromagnetic compatibility. So um, if you have your circuit and then you bring some disturbing uh, electronic signals close to it, that will it um, either disturb that other device or the device in question will disturb your device so so I mean if you if, if you have some of these um, requirements then it's actually quite hard to cover them in this kind of scenario and you actually need to have some some help um, from PCB uh, design software so let's have a very general top level view is what is pcb design software I mean, what, what does it do um basically it starts um with that it um usually it has a possibility to define components so it has a component definition mechanism so it'll give you a uh, schematic um, symbol for the electronic component you're going to use so you use those in circuit diagrams uh, it'll identify the connections that are needed, um, supply voltages for example, ground planes, um, and then the active um, other connections. Um, it'll also provide a footprint, a physical layout on the PCB, so you know if you, if you mount um, certain components on the PCB, like this chip here, it will actually have the information about the space that takes. In, you know, for all, all different types of components you might have on the board. And um, also, um, in some cases, they actually have a 3D representation, so it will um, have a three-dimensional um, picture 
or representation for the component. So that if, if you have um, a requirement to actually be able to design it in the 3D space, then you can actually do that without ac any extra manual work. Um, as I said, yeah, usually these components are organized into libraries and you know they usually they do come with libraries already predefined but it's actually important to be able to tweak those designs sometimes so uh, I value that you can yourself create components and maintain um, those components in a library and then you have the actual uh, schematic design process where you add components to a schematic design and you uh, create the interconnections between those and then you add connection points um, to and from. Yeah, this means signaling that's coming into the board and going out of the board. Uh, and at this phase there are some software that provides the possibility to already simulate the circuit just from the schematic design. And then once you have a schematic design then you uh, connect that or transfer that to a to the PCB design part and in the PCB design part you uh, you various levels of support exist depending on the software you have but usually speaking you have to then lay out the components as I said that there are software that does that also automatically so it automatic um, and then you route the connections uh, physically how they should go on the board and if it's a multi-layer board, then how, how the signals go in the other layers. That can, you can have boards that have you know, one layer, t two conductive layers, or four. Or, uh, and that's also a limitation in many PCB software, depending on what you pay. You know, how, many, um, you know, how many layers of the circuit board you can actually have. Um, and here, if you were, when I was talking about design criteria, then then you in PCB design software usually have automatic um, enforcing of design criteria or design rules so you can like pick high voltage design rules or and then you can apply it to certain areas in the board and then it automatically checks that you're not violating or if it's to do with um, RF signaling or uh, you know, high speed signaling then it will actually um, it will it will do the routing and, and the single path lengths and stuff automatically in the correct way for that specific design criteria, and that's very hard to do manual if you're not doing it for a very specific location on the board. Then of course you can do it manually, but you know, if it's on a larger scale, then there's no way you can self route you know, 60 signals or 80 or hundreds of things, <laughs> and then um. Also an important feature is that you can actually export the metadata, design metadata from manufacturing so the board can actually be made. And in this case also then we have the issue that depending on what software you have that it could provide the option to simulate the, um, the actual PCB design, the physical PCB design, to actually make sure that if you're handling high, high speed signaling or RF signaling that, um, that all the signals um, uh, yeah, from a simulation perspective, are clean and, and you know move around. Um, and then uh, also, it's nice to have this bi-directional connection. Like if you're actually doing the PCB design and you find, oh, I forgot this component, then you can actually either add the component to the PCB design and have it uh, mirrored in the schematics you know, for further processing, or the other way around if you want to move reconnect components that you can actually do it in the um, PCB design and have it reflected in the schematics. So anyway that gives a, a brief rundown of the um, world of PCB design software functionality. So anyway I thought what we could do now is to um, go through some software that I found online. Um, I'll, yeah, talk about it uh, briefly on each item and then um, give some uh, pros and cons and, um, and then um, discuss my final solution. Uh, the reason I want to go through uh, different options is that I think that maybe if 
somebody else out there is looking for an alternative um, PCB design software package, then it, it is quite possible you would like one of these packages, uh, even if, if it's the one that I haven't selected. So, so I, I'll also um, leave the links to every for the home pages of this software uh, in the comments. So if you just want to go and browse them yourself and uh, see what you find. But anyway, um, and then I've ranked it kind of like the the ones that I like the least first, and then you know right down to the to the top of the list of the, uh, the ones that I think are most likely that I'll be using. So anyway, let's get into it. So let's have a look at um, Easy Eda and. Um, it's actually an interesting one because it's uh, it's created by one of um, China's largest electronic component suppliers, and um, it used to actually only be available online, so you can you, know, you just use it with the browser. But now they've actually made a standalone version of it, or a so-called free version, and um, it's got. Um, it's not open source, but they have a free standard version, and then they have a professional and enterprise version. And currently, the professional uh, version is temporarily free. Uh, usually, they take a monthly fee. Um, uh, it still has a pretty heavy emphasis on online presence, even if you can actually um, store your files locally. Uh, the the free policy is a bit unclear. You know they might actually decide to discontinue it tomorrow. It's also uh, very heavily connected to this um, uh, electronic supplier uh, component suppliers uh, that are so it has a tight connection. And as I said, it's not open source. But I mean, on the positive side, it has a nice user interface. It seems to have good functionality, and it does have. Um, uh, project support, so you can actually create um, you know, uh, encapsulated um, PCB projects, which not all software actually has. But uh, no, I think I'm giving this one a pass. So let's have a look at Osmond um, PCB. It's a little bit different, this one. Um, this was kind of created as a personal project of an engineer. And uh, it's primarily a PCB layout tool uh, that uses the actual netlists generated from other software. And then you import it and then you make the layout. <laughs> it actually only runs on the Mac. And, <coughs> and since I don't have a Mac, it's kind of exclusive for me. Um, uh, the reason, only reason I actually included this is it probably has some um, hardcore niche functionality regarding um, PCB layout design that other software components don't have. Um, so, yeah, so that's the only reason I included it in my list. But it's not for me as I don't, I don't have a Mac, and I would think that it's actually too advanced for me. Also, I. I, I probably don't have the level of problems that this software can solve, but um, you know, if anybody's out there and has complex layout issues, uh, it might be worth downloading and giving it a try. So anyway, for fairness, I thought I'd just actually include Autodesk's own product for um, electronics design, which is Fusion 360 for Electronics Engineers. And um, basically, I'm not going to use this Due to the same you know, issues that I have with Eagle. It's um, too Autodesk centric, and the licensing policies and stuff are not really something that I can afford. Um, but it might be worth consideration if you if you're actually already in the Fusion 360 infrastructure, especially if your company paid license, then it uh, might actually be worth having a look at. So anyway, now we're going to hit the hardcore part. Um, this is Altium. If you happen to be a student, I think that this would be a good option. <laughs> Otherwise, forget it because they run like uh, licensing policies are like one thousand dollar a year fees. <laughs> but I mean, it's 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 the one of the world market leaders in um, PCB design. So uh, yeah, if you're if you're in a 
if you're a student then you can pick up a license basically for free on a renewable basis and um, uh, if you're a company then I think that this also would be worthy a um, investigation but not for me too expensive and I'm not a student so then we have Libre Pace PCB and um, it's a new generation uh, PCB design package also um, so it's built for faster computers and it has more features in it uh, did put some time into using this but the, one of the things that I thought it was to, it somewhat leaves a feeling of unfinished early development also didn't have any import options that I could find so you can't import Eagle Pro, uh, you can't import any other projects and um, but it is open source, so it might actually be worth spending some time on. But I thought it too, ah, in its current form at least, um, a little bit too unfinished for my taste. So then we have Fritzing. This is a little bit special. Um, because what you can do is you can make breadboard designs on it, and circuit diagrams, and simple PCB designs in the same package so um, I've actually used it myself for but predominantly for breadboard uh, visualizations but if you're if you if you have a simple breadboard project and you just want to turn it into a simple piece of view this is actually quite a easy to use solution it has a quite a um, extensive library of the more common components that one, that one would use but I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't call it a conventional PCB design software solution <laughs> So it's, it's more for a simpler hands-on project, some um, breadboard design and um, yeah, simpler circuit boards, but it, 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 take a look at it, it's a, a vast deviation from what one usually expects. So then we have Upverter, and um, it's an online tool from Altium, um, the one we already went through, the big manufacturer. Uh, it's supposed to be. It's not also not really a conventional PCB design software solution because I, th as I used it a bit, it's like it's based on more like PCB component layout centric design approach. So yeah, it might suit some people. But I didn't find it. Yeah, I didn't find it that useful. And plus, it's on online only, so. I didn't, yeah. Really would like to be able to do local storage, not open source. <laughs> so, um, Design Spark. So, um, this is also kind of like it's sort of like a component supplier supported initiative. Uh, it's kind of aimed at sort of simpler projects for beginners and students. It does need an online account, and um, I actually couldn't register for an online account because it didn't accept my email address mm, of all the strangest things that can happen in the world. So I actually wasn't even able to try it. But um, ah, as I said, I'm not really keen on online-only solutions and specifically solutions that are connected to, uh, to a hardware manufacturer. It's also not open source, so uh, yeah, I don't really know one way or the other if it, how useful it is. Just thought I'd include it in the list anyway. So anyway, now we're getting into the final um, pieces of the software, the ones that I've rated that I might actually consider seriously using. So the first one here is KiCad, and um, the <laughs> this has been around forever, um, and. Uh, it's, it's used by several uh, ah, known organizations, the Raspberry Pi Foundation, Arduino, CERN. Uh, it's got a very active community. Also, this actually has one interesting fact that it actually declares good um, integration with FreeCAD. And um, also uh, integration with free simulation software components. So. Um, yeah, I kind of like this. This is conventional PCB design software. It's got project support. It's full offline usage. It's open source. 
it's got into good integration with other open source software so I, so it's on my short list okay so the next one uh, circuit maker alt from altium again um, it's a free offering yeah it's quite good it's got this follows the conventional PCB design software approach. It's got good functionality. Um, negatives, it's online only, not open source. It does have a bit of its own way of doing things. May or may not irritate some people. <laughs> and it it's slow and takes a lot of memory. At least in my um, PC configuration, that's it, it said relatively dog slow to run. I uh, don't know what kind of a library they're using to run, runtime library they're using to run on. It's not exactly the fastest, but uh, it's still on my short list because I thought as a, as a conventional PCB design software online, I think this is actually quite good. So I might use it as a kind of a backup solution. So, and then the final one I have on the list is the uh, dip trace relatively interesting it's also more like in the line with PCB conventional PCB design software uh, it's from Novarm another specialist company uh, it's a uh, positive conventional PCB design software and it's freeware I said that it's free to use it has good functionality the negative is that it has, I can't see that it has any project structure, so every entity you create, like a PCB or a schematic, it's its own standalone entity, and you have to build a folder structure, basically build a folder structure which represents the project structure. Uh, the, free ver the free version is limited to 300 pins, two signal layers. Ah, if you want to see the negative, you have to pay to upgrade the functionality. But I didn't think it was that bad. Yeah, so another um, another possible option. So anyway, that's the rundown of the software that I went through. Um, of course, if I'm almost going to go into the details of every software package, one would spend hours making these videos, so I just thought I'd keep it a quick rundown and done. Basically, what I'm now going to focus on is I'm going to use KiCad as my main entry point uh, for future design work and see how that works out. And then I'm going to actually hold Circuit Maker Altium as an online option. So I might actually be using those those two in tandem. So, but as I said, it's some you know selecting software. So uh, some of it's objective and some of it's subjective. But um, yeah, I think for my specific use, since I'm a, a mainly um, hobbyist and. Um, I like to support open source initiatives. I think that, um, yeah, in my case, I think CarCard will probably do for what I need to do at least. So, so yeah, so CarCard with um, Circuit Maker being a, uh, as a backup. And I hope this list helps you. I mean, if you want to make your own selection process, then I could just go through this same list and maybe you'll come up with, uh, with an option that will work for you in the best ways. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. If you did, um, hit the like button. Um, you know, if you want to finance my work, then merch is available. Uh, buy me a cup of coffee, that's also possible. Links are in the, in the um, comments. And also, as I said, I'll, I'll add the links to all the software in the comments also. So the list is available there. And um, I'll see you in the next one.